All right, hi, you're seven, or you're eight, whoever's doing this. Um, that incredibly handsome guy in front of you is, is me, Mr. Winter. Um, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be doing some 3D printing. So um, I'm just going to make my face disappear for a second because I didn't actually mean to put that there. There we go. Right. So these are our uh, these are our learning objectives. Essentially, in this project, you're going to be learning uh, what 3D printing is, uh, why it's good and why it's sometimes bad, uh, what CAD and CAM stand for, and you're going to understand how to use a 3D CAD package, which is a piece of software to design and make a simple 3D product that we're going to manufacture on the schools for 3D printers. Um, the to be able the higher level bit is that by the end of this five or six lesson project you will have designed and printed either a, uh, like a pencil topper which I'll show you in just a second um, looks a bit like this there we go uh, with your initials something similar okay I'll just hold that up for you hopefully the right way around that make more sense okay with a hole in the end of it or you will have made uh, something similar but as like a key ring that can go um, on your keys that's generally where they go okay so as well as uh, producing the 3d artifact which we'll get the printers to make so you don't even have to get your hands dirty for this um, you're also going to produce a model of your design that you can show as kind of evidence that you did it all right um, now you've already found the video hopefully your teachers will have shown you where to load the software but if they haven't um, you're going to be looking for this icon on your desktop um, this one here, Autodesk Inventor Professional 2017. Um, double click that, don't keep clicking it, it takes a while to load, uh, but after a couple of minutes it should load up with a screen similar to that one there. Okay, uh, on this you need to follow my instructions really, really carefully. Okay, this is quite a complicated bit of software, it's used by people in real life designing anything from uh, you know mobile phones right all the way up to airplanes and satellites and it's a very powerful bit of software but because it's powerful it's quite complicated if you've never used it before so please listen to what I do if you do it and something goes wrong um, my best advice is to stop what you're doing do control Z on the keyboard which means go back and then rewind the video watch that step again and just double check that you haven't done anything wrong if you absolutely can't figure it out on your own then stop the video and ask your teacher to come and give you some assistance okay what you shouldn't do is sit there and watch this whole video and just watch it all the way to the end and then try and do it because there's so many steps you'll forget them what I'd like you to do is literally watch a bit pause it do that part yourself come back unpause the video and keep going okay easy peasy alright so when you get the program loaded up uh, it should look a bit like this you can either click here on parts or you can go up to here file new and click new and choose uh, standard part to be honest the easiest way is just to click part and this will load you up a screen that looks a little bit like this it'll look completely strange at first um, before you do anything else I'd like you to save it so click save that's that little square icon up there if you've never seen the save button before as some of you haven't and in your documents so you need to go find that so it'll be for me it'd be Rob Winter I want you to save this what it's going to be so call it your name I don't know I'm gonna call it oh, what have I done there Rob Winter um, 3d printing okay and just click Save now it's very click yes if you get that message very important you save regularly uh, this program can crash and you don't want to lose your work all right when you're here you're going to make a new sketch okay start 2d sketch and you should get this little thing appear here okay now what it's asking us is where would we like to start sketching our 3d model um, I'd recommend you go on the XZ plane this one here doesn't really matter but um, this will make things closer to the video if you follow what I'm doing um, a few little things I want to show you here uh, before I go too far um, I just want you to grab the rectangle tool now and just drag out a rectangle so you just click once you can start from the middle if you like and click again okay um, we're done with that tool so right click and click OK and before we go any further I just want to show you how to uh, change your view in Inventor because this is a 3D uh, software package you need to be able to 
move in three dimensions. So first thing you can do is if you click your mouse but, uh, wheel, the middle mouse wheel in, because it's a button, and hold it, you can drag your picture around left and right, which is quite useful. Um, if you scroll the mouse wheel backwards and forwards, you can see we can zoom in and out. Um, if you hold down shift on your keyboard, that's the little arrow on the left, and click and hold the mouse wheel, you'll get this little symbol. And now if you move your mouse in circles, you can see we're sort of rotating our view around in 3D. Okay. Now don't worry if you mess that up and you can't figure out how to get it back to looking straight because the final thing I'm going to show you is how to straighten your view back up. Over here on the right there should be this little square called look at. If you click that then go all the way over here and click where it says sketch one your view will straighten back up. Okay so if you haven't tried those things already pause the video and practice scrolling in and out clicking the mouse button and holding down shift and clicking the mouse button just to get used to how to manipulate your view and then practice look at over here and you can either click on sketch one or you can click on your sketch and it will straighten your view okay right if you've done that uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some sizes on this rectangle because your pencil topper um, here we go is going to be a maximum size all right it's going to be sorry line that up we're not going to be any bigger than 40 millimeters long and about 10 mil, uh, sorry, 25 millimeters in height and 25 millimeters in thickness. Okay, very very important that you follow those dimensions because otherwise, on the 3D printers, uh, there they are over there, these thingies. Um, we've got to print like 25 of these for each class, and there's uh, nearly 280 of you in year seven, so that's going to take a long time if you make them massive. And also, we're Collingwood, we've got no money. Um, so we can't afford to print them any bigger basically right okay so back to this we're going to put a size on it so to put a size on you're going to use this tool called dimension so click it once click on the top line move your mouse up and click again and we're going to type in a number here 45 you can either hit enter or click the ticks up to you I hit enter dimension tool again and we're going to click on this side now drag it out click and I'm going to type that one as 25 okay that's the biggest your pencil topper or um, key ring can be okay right next thing um, I'd suggest for whatever you're going to do uh, just to keep it simple for now um, start by making the model as I do so we're going to do it based on your initials uh, and then if you find that really easy and you've got time left over then I'm happy for you to make a new model that could be a completely different shape altogether but so that everyone has a guaranteed project to make I want you all to at least make one that says your initials on it so we're going to use the text tool now click that and just click roughly anywhere in the middle of here and you'll get a little window pop up now type your initials mine are RW I'm going to do them in capitals because it comes out better and we're going to set a few things up here. We're going to change the font. So what you need to do is highlight your text. Just drag over it. Here you can choose your fonts. Now I recommend impact as the font. So you can press I on the keyboard as a short part, uh, shortcut. There we go. Select impact as the font. And because we know how tall it needs to be, 25 millimeters, I'm going to type that number into this box here where it says size 25 click OK right now you'll notice a few things um, first of all it's kind of rotated the wrong way secondly it might not be big enough or a little bit too big so we're going to rotate our picture now uh, so click rotate select your text type in an angle of 270 because uh, we're going to turn it three quarters to the right and then basically click where it says select and somewhere around the bottom left hopefully where that green blob appears click and you should see it's rotated our picture okay and click done oh I'll do that again I should have clicked apply so rotate pick on pick on the oh. sorry rotate angle 270 click on select on the corner click apply click done all right um, remember zoom in and out if you need more space um, click in to pan left and right until you can see everything on the screen right we're going to put that into our box now just to see how it sizes up 
Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. It's the right height. It could be a little bit longer. If because your letters and your initials are different to mine, you want it a bit longer, double click on it and you'll get back to this menu. Highlight your initials. And here, this will allow you to stretch or shrink the text. So if I did 105%, you can see my W's now growing a little bit longer and that fills up the box a bit better. So that's how I'm going to leave it. Okay, right. Um, we're ready to turn into 3D now. I'm just going to show you um, that this is still two dimensional. So by holding down shift and clicking the middle mouse button in, you can see if I rotate my view now, you can see it's very much a two dimensional or a flat object. I'm done sketching now. So I'm going to click finish sketch over here on the right. And you'll see all the tools have changed to different ones. Now, the only one you're really going to need here is this guy called extrude. Extrude does what the picture says. It takes a 2D outline and stretches it into 3D. So go ahead and click Extrude. And now click on your letters. And it you'll see you've got several options here. You can type how much to extrude it by. Or you can grab this arrow here and you can pull it. You can pull it the other way if you wanted. It doesn't matter. Uh, but we want ours to be 25 millimeters tall. That's the maximum height I'm going to let you print your design to. OK. When you're done, uh, click the tick. All right, so you've made your first 3D shape. Practice now and pause the video, holding down shift, clicking the mouse button in and just panning your view around and zooming in and out and moving left to right because in a minute we're going to be looking at different parts of the object and drawing extra things on. All right, hopefully you've had a go uh, playing around with the view. Now, we're going to do a bit of thinking here. If we were to 3D print this, all we're going to end up with is two letters, an R and a W. They're not joined together. Um, if you look at my finished example, I don't know if you can see that very carefully. There's like a cylinder running down the center. All right, that's holding my R and my W together. OK, there we go. Uh, and obviously that cylinder also needs to be there so that we can have a hole running through it that we can put the pencil into. OK. Get rid of my face. All right. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a cylinder and add it to our sketch. So we need to do some more sketching. That means we need to click this button, start a 2D sketch. Now it's asking you, where would you like to draw? Now we're going to draw it on this side here of the R. Uh, if your name starts with an O or another letter that's not got a flat bit on there, um, talk to your teacher. Uh, but hopefully there'll be some flat area where you can draw it. Right, so click on the side here and you'll see your view rotates automatically and we're now looking at the side of our object. What I'd like you to do now is get the circle tool and don't just click yet, but what I want you to do is move, just hover your mouse along the bottom and you'll see a green dot appears when you're sort of in the middle of this line. That allows us to find the sort of center of our object, okay? Um, so find that dot that shows you the center and just click to start drawing. And I want you to, before you click again, just type the number 1515 and hit enter. So we've drawn a dimension as we went there. We've made our circle. Now, what I want you to do now is to make sure that circle is definitely in the center. If we click the dimension tool, I'm gonna click the center, and the top and then move sideways. Okay, it won't allow me to do that. Um, sorry, let's try that again. I had a weird yellow line there. I just clicked it and pressed delete. So if you get that, you shouldn't do on yours though. So, sorry, dimension. So I'm going to click that and that and click. And if this whole thing is 25 tall, then half of 25 will be the middle, so half of 25, good timing. Half of 25 is 12.5, hit enter. Okay, I'd like you to click dimension again, and now click the middle and the left hand side and move down. And because we already put that one in the middle, it already says 12 and a half. So I'm happy my circle is dead in the center. If I rotate my view now, you can see where we're going to go with this. We're going to kind of pull that circle through here. Okay, so go ahead and click finish sketch. We now want to extrude. So pick the extrude tool. Now it's asking you, what do you want to extrude? It's saying, tell me the profile. So click on the circle. Now you'll notice it seems to be going the wrong way. 
Right, you've got options here. If I click this arrow, it points it the other way, but I don't know if you noticed this box here also got ticked. All right, you have to be a bit careful here. So we want to go in direction two, but we want that top box ticked. I don't know if you can see the difference there, but the top box adds in material. That box, which is cut, would actually cut a big hole through it. All right, now we don't want to cut a hole, we want to add material. And we probably want to go a bit further. I reckon, to make it stronger, I want my cylinder, so I've just dragged the arrow there, to go all the way up to about there. You don't want to go too far, you don't want it sticking out here because that'll look rubbish. Okay, about there, and click the tick. All good. Okay, just a couple things to do now. Um, we're going to now make the hole for the pencil. So what I want you to do is go and make another sketch. Click on here again. And we're going to draw another circle now. In fact, we're going to do something else. We're going to click Project Geometry. And if you hover, you should be able to see the circle that you just drew kind of appears. So just click so you've got the circle there. And that's going to help us position our new circle right in the center. Go and get your circle tool. Find the dot in the middle, click. And without clicking again, press 8 and hit enter. Okay, we're going to make an 8mm hole in the middle. Right, you can see where this is going. We're done drawing our sketch, so we click finish. And we're now going to extrude. So click extrude. It's automatically picked it for us. This time though, we don't want to add material, we want to cut material. And you'll see what's happened there. It's already gone all the way through. And I probably don't want the hole for my pencil to stick all the way through. I'm going to drag it down to, I don't know, roughly about 3 quarters of the way through click the tick and we're done. So we've got our initials joined together with a tube with a hole down the middle for the pencil. The last thing I'm going to show you um, is how to make this look a bit more presentable. Clever tool here called Fillet. Click that and fill it. If you click on these edges you'll see what it does. It's going to round them for us. So I'm going to click all my kind of sharp edges just to make this a bit more comfortable in a pocket. Now if you click a bit that's wrong hold down shift on your keyboard and click it again and it will deselect it. Okay, so I'm just clicking all the sharp points. This will make it much more comfortable to hold. Uh, it'll actually look a bit nicer when it's printed. Okay, if you wanted those a bit more rounded you could try changing the number here. So 3 for instance is probably a bit overkill. I'm going to leave it at 2 and click the tick and that is your key ring done. So if you've got that far you've done enough to be able to tick off this to be able to very nearly. All you've got left to do is save it and uh, send the file to your teacher or save it wherever she, she or he asks you to and then you'll be able to make your model. Okay. So to save your work ready for 3D printing um, and the teacher will show you the 3D printer by the way and how it works. Save it anyway that saves the inventor file, but what you now need to do is this. File, save as, save copy as, and in your documents, down here, this little drop box, you'll see all these options for different file types. Choose STL, this is the type of file the 3D printer likes. Go to options, very important you do this, and make sure this is changed from centimeters to millimeters click OK. Alright, so it should say your name 3D printing dot STL save that. Okay, that file we just saved, your name dot STL is the one you need to email to your teacher if you want this 3D printed, which you need to have because it's cool and also because it's what's going to get you the grade uh, for this project. Okay, um, in video two what I will show you is an alternative, although I don't know what's happened to it. Um, I'll show you how to make a key ring, which is a very similar process, but rather than making a hole in it, we're going to make like a, a bracket on the side with a, a hook area in it that you can put a key ring around. Um, so if you found this one easy and quick, go watch the second video. If you found the second video really easy as well, then what I suggest you do is perhaps design a pencil topper that isn't based on your initials. Uh, it could be like your own shape, star, whatever. Um, plenty of ideas out on the internet uh, if you've got no creativity and design that. But basically you need to have at least one of these made within two lessons if you're going to have this 3D printed in time. Alright, thanks for watching.